Hey YouTube, this is the Browning Fear Factor Folding Karambit. At least they're calling it a karambit. I would call it a hawkbill, but you'll see. Uh, G10 handle scales. The price on this, around $18. Nice. It's a liner lock. And look at that blade, yes. You know, stuff like this just <laughs> warms my heart. This is part of Browning's Black Label line. That is Browning's uh, tactical line. It includes the shock and awe tomahawk and a whole bunch of assorted nasty items. The blade length on this was listed as three and a half inches. I found it's a little bit more. It's around 3.7 inches. The steel is listed as 440 stainless. That usually means 440A if they don't specifically say C. So I think it I think it is 440A. And this also comes in a fixed blade model. I didn't know that till I got this, so maybe I'll try out the fixed blade model as well. Now as you see, it does not have a ring like a typical karambit would, and it doesn't really curve that much forward uh, as most karambits do. That's why I say I would call this a hawkbill. And there you see the blade itself. It has a partial hollow grind. You see it has a swedge and it has titanium nitride type coating. This blade shape is designed for draw cuts, all right, close cutting, as well as tip slashing. You know, this type of blade, Browning themselves markets this as, let, let's just say when di diplomacy fails, uh, you pull out the, the fear factor. There is some debate uh, among self-defense uh, experts, you know, between thrusting designs and then slashing and close cutting designs like this. Some people say, oh, you want a thrusting design because it's just downright more deadly. But then other people will say, well, self-defense is not the same as trying to be deadly. Maybe you just want to uh, disable or do the least amount of damage while still surviving yourself. So there is some debate. But where this type of blade fits in would be weapon retention for one thing. I personally subscribe to several police officers on here that have channels and they've shown uh, weapon retention drills where basically if someone will grab for your firearm uh, you you pin their hand with your uh, with your dominant hand and then they use their knife on their weak side uh, to prevent that person from keeping grabbing at them. So for something like that weapon retention drill usage. Yeah, I could see this blade shape giving you quite a bit of leverage and effectiveness. Here is a close-up of your Fear Factor folder. The texture pattern on the G10 is very grippy, so that's good. And you see it has open pillar construction, a single position pocket clip. You see it has an index finger flipper, and dual thumb studs. When it first arrived the pivot was uh, very tight so the flipper didn't work but I loosened it slightly and now the flipper does work requires a little bit of a flick. There's the liner lock there. The lockup is it is secure. Liner is easy to disengage and the thumb studs the thumb studs work very well too. So deployment is fast, lockup is good. How sharp is it? It's medium sharp. You know, it does. If you, I don't know if you can see it, the cut is kind of rough. That's how you can tell. You know, it's not super dull, but. Oops, see. <laughs> yeah. It's not all that sharp. Of course, uh, you know, the, the business portion is that tip. 
Yeah, that tip is going to be the workhorse uh, portion of this, this blade. But overall, it, it is surprisingly solid for, for an $18 knife. Uh, you, you could do a lot worse than this knife, believe it or not. As far as competitive options, uh, here we have the Bird Crossbill. And that's the only thing I could find that was around the same price and the same general idea. You want to see exactly the size. They're of comparable size. The browning is uh, slightly longer. But yeah, this uh, bird crossbill is pretty nice. I wish they had it in full serrated, but you can't have everything in this life. These type of blades, as I said, uh, they're going to warm your heart if if it's a if it's a black and coal of a heart but hey the black label line these things are they're kind of funny in some respects but at the same time I respect the blade any blade kitchen knife you know shank could it function uh, you know in the way that they say is it tactical is it defensive I don't know you be the judge. I mean, if I was walking down a dark alley and somebody pulled this out and said, Welcome to the jungle, baby. I would walk the other way. It would deter me. You know? Whether I could disarm or not. Who wants to try? It's a freaking steel talon. You know what I'm saying? I like this blade for the price. You know, it's a blade that's here to tempt you. I'm sure you're thinking, uh, you, you know, you probably won't really need this, but you never know if you only need it one time, you're gonna really need it. And I'm sure you're thinking, oh, but it's made in China. Well, that's true, but this was like $21 with free shipping, so, you know, if you count shipping, it's, 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 it's well under $20, so pick your poison. I think it's great for what it is. I mean, the lockup is solid. It deploys correctly, good ergonomics. If I had my way, this would have, like, full, super sharp, like, spider edge serrations, like the Spyderco Civilian. But, hey, for this price, I'm not going to complain. I hope you enjoyed seeing it. This has been We All Juggle Knives. I'm out.